Hello friends. Today we are going to start a video series to learn more about microcontrollers and embedded systems programming. We can start by understanding what is a microcontroller. According to Oxford Dictionary, microcontroller is a control device which incorporates a microprocessor. But along with the microprocessor, we also need some peripheral components. So a microcontroller will have all these components and we will get to know about this in our coming videos. How microcontrollers can be classified? Predominantly, we can classify according to these criteria. Based on the bus width, we have mainly three types of microcontrollers. It can be 8-bit, 16-bit and 32-bits. Don't worry about what is bus width and all. So we will talk about this again in upcoming videos. And mainly according to architecture, we have Harvard and Von Neumann or uh, we can say Princeton architecture. Von Neumann is an ancient architecture and it is followed in microprocessor but Harvard is quite popular in microcontrollers. Then we have another classification, CISC and RISC. It is based upon the handling the computer task using the instruction set used in microprocessor. CISC will be using a single long instruction to execute several low-level operations while in RISC method, the bigger tasks are simplified into smaller ones to handle them easily. One of the advantage of RISC over CISC is it uses very lesser power for executing instructions. Now we can tell some history. Back in 1980s, Acon computers developed one processor using this RISC instruction set and we are calling it as the first ever very famous ARM processor. So why ARM processors are so relevant? They are used in a wide range of applications. The best example is our smartphones. Qualcomm, MediaTek, Exynos etc. are using ARM architectures for their processors. Not only smartphones, we have tablets, ebooks, health monitoring and fitness tracking wearables, automotive chips, IoT devices, and sooner we can expect that even in a computer also. When I am recording this video, Apple has announced their M1 Ultra chip, which is based upon ARM architecture. So we should know about the ARM processors, right? And we should know how it is programmed. Are you ready? Ok, good. There are three types of ARM processor mainly we can see in the market. First one is Cortex-A. These are used for advanced operating systems like Linux and Android. And these processors exhibit highest possible performance. Next type is Cortex-R. These are the processors meant for real-time applications like we can say automotive products and all and last but not least we have cortex m so these are all mainly for microcontrollers so which one is best for us cortex m right what are the types of cortex m processors we have m0 m0 plus m3 m4 and m7 processors available in the market firstly m0 so it has smaller silicon area so it is one of the smallest ARM processor available. Its applications are in touch screen controllers and uh, brushless uh, motor controllers etc. Next one M0 plus processors. So it is highly energy efficient. It consumes very less power so it is suitable for ultra low power applications such as IoT, wireless Bluetooth transceivers. M3, it is a standard 32-bit embedded processor. We can find them in smartwatches and activity trackers. The M4 processors are capable with DSP performance. So they are coming with floating point units. So we will uh, understand more about floating point unit in our coming videos. Therefore, they are used for audio processing and other digital signal processing applications. The last one. M7 processors are built with maximum performance and they are used in high performance applications like digital signal processing. Now we have to purchase a microcontroller. So who are all manufacturing ARM based microcontrollers? 
Mainly we have TI, ST Micro, Toshiba, NXP, Microchip, Broadcom, etc. According to our requirements and applications, we can choose the microcontroller manufactured by these companies. In the upcoming videos, we will try some hands-on projects with ARM-based microcontroller. If you would like to join with me, you can purchase any ARM-based microcontroller because the strategy for the programming is almost similar in all the ARM-based MCUs. If you are purchasing a STM32 development board like Nucleo or Discovery, you can easily relate what I am demonstrating. Here I am using Nucleo G474RE development board. It incorporates STM32 G474RE microcontroller. It is a 32-bit ARM microcontroller, so it follows Harvard architecture and it has RISC instruction set. Here we will be using STM32 Cube IDE in order to write and download our program into the development board or into the microcontroller. In our next video, we will see how we can blink an LED on our development board. Okay, then see you in the next video. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.